Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Video 4. We now look at cubic spline. So given a set of knots from T0 to Tn sorted, we define the cubic spline with the, the function Si defined piecewise on the interval from Ti to Ti plus 1. Since each SI shall be a cubic polynomial, so in general, I could write it in this form, that is, AIX cubed plus BIX squared plus CIX plus DI. So for each I, I would need four parameters. Once those four parameters are given, my spline function is determined. So let's do a count. So for each i, I have four unknowns, and how many intervals do I have? i runs from 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1, so there are n intervals. So the total number of unknowns is 4 times n. And we have a bunch of requirements to be satisfied, um, namely s, the spline itself, s prime, and s second derivative, they must be all continuous functions. And furthermore, the s of x must interpolate the data at the knots. We'll now go through these requirements and try to set up equations that will represent these requirements. Okay, let's see what equations will we have. So let's first look at the requirement that s has to interpolate the data at the knots. So consider on the interval from ti to ti plus 1, and you have a function, piecewise function, si, defined on it. So si evaluated at ti must interpolate the data yi. And this holds for all intervals i from 0, 1 to n minus 1. So in the end, I get total n equations. And now, similarly, on the same interval, Si evaluated at ti plus 1 must interpolate the data point yi plus 1. And this holds for all intervals, and I have n of such intervals, so I get n equations. And then the derivative has to be continuous, especially at all the inner knots. So consider a knot at ti plus 1, the derivative on the left must equal to the derivative approaching it on the right. And this holds for all the inner knots. And in the end, I get n minus 1 such equations. And finally, the second derivative must be continuous as well at all the inner knots. So this is the same as these, except that I now take second derivative on the s. Okay, And then by the same reason, I will have n minus 1 equations. Now let's do a count. How many equations do we have now? I have n, and I have n, and n minus 1, and n minus 1. So totally I have 4n minus 2 equations already. Comparing to the total number of unknown, which is 4n, I see that I need two more equations. So two more conditions are still missing. So here, these two conditions become your free choice. Okay, so we will make a choice. So we make the following choice. We want the second derivative of our spline function at the two endpoints at t0 and at tn shall be 0. Okay, so one on the left end of the interval, one on the right end of the interval, and this gives me two equations. We see now we have total 4n equations. The number of equations matches the number of the unknowns. So theoretically, there is a unique solution if it is well posed. And I would like to mention that the condition here that was our free choice, the two additional equations that we added on, if we choose it in this way, that is, letting the s double prime to be zero at the two end, that choice actually makes our 
spline, a natural spline. Okay, so it's this choice that gives the name natural. Of course, there are other choices, and for some problems, you might have boundary conditions that you must fit in, and if you choose others, then it's not a natural spline anymore. So for the rest of this video, we'll be focusing on natural cubic splines. Okay. So now, how do we compute these SIs? We know the following. Each SI is a polynomial of degree 3. Then if I differentiate it once, I lose a degree. And S prime I is a polynomial of degree 2. And if I differentiate it one more time, S double prime of I becomes a polynomial of degree 1. And furthermore, the function as a whole, S double prime of X, becomes a piecewise linear polynomial, and it also continues. So this one is actually a linear spline. So here is the procedure of uh, how to find SI. We actually go backwards. So what we will do will be we will be starting with S double prime. These are linear and these are linear prime, and we will put in Lagrange form for these polynomials. And then we will integrate this twice to get SIs, and then we know we'll get two integration constants. And then we will use the constraints to determine these constants. And there are various little tricks on the way. It will be a pretty lengthy uh, derivation for the algorithm. And that derivation we'll be looking at in the next video.